setting up a nice looking podcast can feel a little bit intimidating. So today we're going to build one from scratch and I'm going to try to do it in like five minutes. Fingers crossed because this is all pretty much live here. I've got a list of things we're going to talk about, including how to set up multiple cameras, switch between them super quickly, how to set up a custom overlay, custom scene like this. You can have multiple people on at once as well as a custom graphic background, how to set up multiple microphones and have the cameras automatically switch views based on who's talking at once. That and a handful more things, including what I'm about to do right now, which is play your custom animation at the beginning of your podcast, like this. Let's start with the central device of this entire setup. This is a brand new device that's come out today as of posting this video. It's called the Roadcaster Video S. And in my opinion, it's probably one of the simplest ways and most professional ways to start a podcast. It's important that you know that this device was sent to me and I get to keep it, but I'm not being paid for this video and Rode doesn't get to see and approve it before I post it. So whatever level bias you wanna call that, do what you will with it. And I'm gonna be talking more about this device at the end of this whole setup segment here. Now, the very first thing that I did in setting this up was set up my cameras where I wanted them placed and I connected them into the back of this device where you can see right around here, we have inputs one, two, and three. Those are all HDMI inputs. So I've got four different cameras that you can see a little bit better from this camera angle. One right there, one above me, and one right here. And on this device, we have four numbered buttons at the bottom. One, two, and three are those inputs. So you can see here I can switch back to this camera or if I hit one, it switches back to this camera. And then four is that fourth USB input you can see right around here where you can actually connect another camera, a capture card, a webcam, anything that you want through there. These top buttons up here are all custom buttons that allow you to set images like this one we were doing or even custom scenes like this one we were looking at before. So let's set up one of those. You can see that in the top left corner here, this is my Rodecaster Video S. I didn't have to do anything to connect the two other than connect both devices to the same Wi-Fi network and it just shows up. And in here, we have something called a scene builder. That's gonna allow me to take my camera angles. It's gonna allow me to build a custom scene with multiple cameras. And then I can even preview the entire podcast from inside the app wirelessly. Let's go ahead and make a new scene in the B spot right here. We're gonna hit custom and the screen's gonna go blank. We're gonna make this one a 50-50 split down the screen with two different camera angles. So let's go to the first source right here. We're gonna hit this button. We're gonna make it input one. We're gonna crop it. And move it to the side. Let's go ahead and center it and then finish filling out this crop here. It gives you guides so you can see where the middle of the screen is. And now let's add one more angle, and this can be your other guest. We'll make it camera three for another person angle here. Let's go ahead and crop this one halfway. It snaps to the middle, drag it over. And now we have a split screen view of these two camera angles. And it'd be more interesting if there was a second person in here. I should make more friends. So now if I hit this button, hit the one button, it's going to switch back to my one camera. But if I'm going to hit this B button right here, it's going to switch to that scene that I just made. Now, if I wanted to make this a little bit more interesting, have an animated background with borders, that's very easy to do also. Let's go ahead and crop these in a little bit. Center it. Let's just do it with this one. You can see there's a rounded corner icon right there. I'm just going to click and drag it to the right. It's going to round these corners in. We're going to add a border. We're going to make it whatever color we want. Let's go ahead and make it... Uh, Let's make this one green. Let's make it a thicker border. That border is going to apply to all of the sources in here. And then we're going to add a background to go behind this camera on the left. That's going to be media. You can see I've got my media over here. So I'm going to call it Senpai Background. And let's move this down to the bottom. And there we go. I wouldn't call this one looking great, but with a couple little tweaks. Let's go ahead and do the same thing to the right side so it feels a little bit more even over here. And here we go. Here's our multiple guest scene that we've just made. These top buttons up here also do other custom things. And that's what these two buttons on the side of these buttons will control. So if I hit this top one, this is for media. 
and you can see it changes colors. This is kind of a purplish color. I don't know if that's showing through on camera and these buttons turn purple and you can see I've got two things here. One is that intro background that I threw on there and then the other one is that intro that I showed in the beginning. That's how I switched to my intro. Let's talk about how to do that. Over here in my software here, this is where the intro is stored. And so if I click this little settings button, it's gonna allow me to adjust it without switching to it on the podcast itself. And I can either have it play once, I can have it play on an endless loop, or I can have it play once and automatically switch to a scene afterwards. I've got it set to switch to camera one, meaning even if I'm on this scene here, if I play that intro, which I'm gonna do right now, it's gonna switch to camera one. I'll show you. and it automatically goes back to camera one instead of back to the one it was before. That is incredibly useful for a small time podcast where you don't have a dedicated person controlling the scenes and the person on camera is doing it. The fewer buttons you have to press while you're also trying to be entertaining, the easier it's gonna be. Let's jump to this other button down here, kind of like videos, this is for pictures, it's called overlays. And this is where you can add images into it and in that same scene building software, you can choose where they're going to display. So over here, I actually have an image of the back of the Roadcaster video, so I was able to show you that by hitting this button, it turns it on and off. But you can see on the back of this device, we actually have two microphone inputs and I've got a second microphone right here that I'm gonna plug in and I'm gonna show you how to get cameras to automatically switch. Let's do that first. Here in the software, we're gonna to go to auto switching. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take either scenes or inputs and we're going to link them to a microphone. So I'm gonna take this camera angle, which is one, and I'm gonna link it to mic one. It's called a combo jack. That's why it's got the XLR and the quarter inch inputs. So combo one is this microphone right here. Then we're gonna to go to input three, which is my camera over here. And we're gonna link that one to combo two, which is this new Rode microphone that I plugged in here. And we're gonna hit the on button for both. So they're both activated for auto switching. Now, another thing I can do is I can make one a higher priority than the other. That way, maybe this one is my guest and I want them to be able to talk and I wanna be able to say things like, uh-huh, oh, interesting, without it automatically cutting to me. I would make my guest a high priority and I would make myself a low priority. So it only switches to me if I start talking for a longer period of time. For now, let's make them both medium so you can see how it works. And then on this device here, I'm gonna hold the auto button. The light turns blue and it automatically switches to my camera angle because I'm talking into this microphone. But if I move it further away, if I talk into this microphone, it's gonna to switch to this camera angle because this camera and this microphone are linked. And then I go back to this microphone and it switches back to here. But if I hit any of these buttons on here, manually switching scenes, you can see the auto button turns back to white and auto switching automatically turns off. I'm back to manual mode. Now, if two microphones isn't enough for you, you can expand it. If you were to take a Rodecaster Pro 2 or the Rodecaster Duo, you can go out of the second USB port and go into, uh, again, this one right here, the four right there, that's your expansion port. Or if three cameras isn't enough for you, you can connect something like a cam link and plug in a fourth HDMI port, a fourth camera into there and you have four capture cards now. Making this thing super expandable and, and versatile for starting a podcast on easy mode. And that's it. That is the entire podcast properly edited on the fly. That's the most important stuff. I have a feeling we did not make it under five minutes and I formally apologize, but let me go back to my office and let's talk about the Rodecaster Video S and my thoughts on this after going through this entire process. So I really like this device. This is the Rodecaster Video S. It's the smaller version of the Rodecaster Video that came out last year. These two are essentially the same thing, except the original one has an extra USB port, an extra HDMI out, an extra HDMI in. Basically, it's, it's bigger, more buttons, more ports, but same exact video quality between the two, same exact capabilities, same features. It's important to know what this is though, because it got criticized originally for being compared to the Blackmagic ATEM Pro which is an HDMI switcher. You plug in multiple cameras and you switch between which one is being shown at the time with some other features like picture in picture, et cetera. This is a bit more than that. This is an HDMI switcher plus 
a professional mixer because it's got all the hardware of the Rodecaster Pro, the audio mixer, and it's got basically a PC built into it for some more professional things like the scene building that you saw for professional keying, uh, professional audio mixing. So it's kind of a, a three-in-one, a video, audio, and PC all in one device. The main complaint of the original Rodecaster video was that it didn't do 4K. You were limited to 1080p. And this was $1,200. That's not really an entry level price. The people who are willing to pay $1,200 for a piece of gear are gonna be the people that want 4K. And I understand that complaint. But I also understand that that was a machine that had four capture cards built into it and two uh, XLR inputs with full audio mixing suite built into it and a full PC built into it that could record every single input at the same time and adding 4K to that processing power would have made it much more expensive than $1,200. So it kind of landed in this weird middle ground where it was not high enough spec at only 1080p. It was, it was kind of kneecapped for the pros, but at $1,200, it was too expensive for the entry level people. And it was in this weird middle ground. They had two options for releasing the next generation. They can either beef up the specs, make it 4K and release a higher end version, or they can lower the price, which they did, down to $500. And all this is, is one less HDMI in, one less HDMI out, one less USB port, and fewer buttons. The rest is exactly the same. Okay, right, no SD card and also no speaker monitor outs, but essentially the exact same device with the exact same capabilities for less than half the price. You're just missing some IO. So I am a big fan of this device. Every time I look at it and sit down, I think it's gonna be way more complicated than it is. And then it takes me 10 minutes to set everything up. It's probably the best, simplest, and most cost-efficient way of starting a podcast. It's only $500, plus the cost of mics, plus the cost of cameras. But if we're being real here, it's probably a good thing that there's still some financial barrier to starting a podcast. We all know someone that would start a podcast if it was free that probably shouldn't start a podcast. So, Road, don't make your next one cheaper. Just add 4K to the next one. You're crushing it. Happy streaming.